So I decided not to use the regular background, which is just made out of two posters turned the uh, wrong way around, really. Uh, just because this is kind of big and heavy and I might accidentally knock them down and just ruin the video. Um, this is actually a reach, uh, recent purchase of mine. So um, that scrappy place that I've been talking about for I don't know how many videos, but it's just really good, you know. I find a lot of stuff there. They always get new stuff. But unfortunately, they ran out of cameras on probably the worst day they could run out of cameras because um, I actually came across someone who does collect cameras on that day and they were talking to me about cameras. And then I said, you know what, I'm going to go to the scrappy place in the hope of finding an interesting camera. I was hoping maybe I could find a small camera to just put on a shelf or something, you know. They actually had a camera case, but no cameras. But uh, since I always want to get something whenever I go, you know, I don't want to waste my time. I had actually been thinking about getting this old phone for a very long time. So they have a selection of old phones from the 80s and 90s. But this is the oldest looking one that they had. And it kind of looked cool to me, in my opinion. And I actually quite like the brown color. And I decided to get it. So this phone is from around 1977, but it could be from 1976 or after 1977. I'm just saying 1977 because that's kind of rounding it up and rounding it down. Um, since this was made by Northern Telecom, they didn't have themselves named that until 1976. So I'm going to assume that their phones of this, this type of phone is called a Contempora. I'm going to assume since they actually started producing these in like 1968, I believe, that they didn't uh, rebrand these as Northern Telecom until about one year after they had changed their name. So um, let's go on to the phone itself. So this particular version of the phone has buttons and they have a nice clicky feel to them. They're solid plastic, not chiclet. They actually feel like they have some kind of switch beneath them. So it isn't cheap. It's not like one of the rubbery type that you would have on the like the 80s mobile phones. I don't really like those kind of chiclet as they call them. It has, of course, the speaker up here. And then you speak into it down here, and I don't know what OR means. I genuinely have no idea what that is. It's there, it's there, and it's on the actual thing itself as well. So this phone, it's a nice shape, in my opinion. I can see why some people might not like it though, because it's kind of boxy. Now, I hope I don't break anything when I move this, because I just basically dumped the wire. Actually, you know, I'll leave this part down here. And this is the housing. So you see it says uh, Contempra there. There's that OR again. When it's plugged in, whenever this goes down for the first time, uh, the bell inside it will ring. By the way, this phone is fully functional. So if you plug it in, pick up the phone, you'll hear the dial tone. You can ring people, people can ring it and the bell inside will ring. On the side, there's this little switch here where you can turn up or down how loud the bell is. And how that works is basically uh, when you move this, one of the bells inside will move closer or further away from the little thing that moves between the two. Ding, the bells, I don't know what you would call it. I'm just going to call it a dinger for simplicity. And that will either make it higher pitch or lower pitch, therefore making it quieter or louder. So the bottom of this is actually made out of metal, which adds quite a bit of weight to it. And you'll see there it says made in Ireland, which of course I'm sure people who know anything about Northern Telecom will know that it is not made in Ireland at all. In fact, the parts for this were actually made in Canada by Northern Telecom and then they were sent to Ireland where they finished making the phone basically. And there you see the Northern Telecom logo and it says Canada patented 1969-1970. And also all these little things where you can hang it on your wall if you felt like it. By the way, this color is called Coco. It has a really nice retro look to it, you know, 
boxy style. I washed all of the wires on it as well, and I know a lot of people don't like to wash wires just because, well, they're a bit difficult to wash, especially if they're um, coiled wires like that. You have to do it twice to get all the dirt out. Here's the actual telephone line wire, which is a silver color. But what I'm trying to show, there's like these horrible purple marks that I'm trying to get off. Hopefully I can get them off using isopropyl alcohol. I haven't done it yet, but I'm hoping that they're just like maybe paint or marker marks that would be too difficult to get off. Some spots are really bad. It's kind of hard to see, but in real life, it's definitely much worse than what it looks like on the camera. And of course, you just have a regular old, I believe it's called POTS connection there. You know, the similar type of connection that you would use for your internet router. Or if you're a special internet router. Anyways, uh, I was actually thinking of getting this, another thing from the Scrappy place to do with this telephone after I had picked up this. So first what I was going to get was this nice old television, a portable one, just like the other ones that I've shown on my channel. It was a Boots MTV5 black and white television and it looked really, really nice. It was really, really small as well. But someone had left nine D-cell batteries in it, probably for 30 years, so... I'd be surprised if that thing worked. I opened it, got all the battery acid over myself. I wiped my hands up and then I just said, you know, like there's a bunch of batteries all falling around the place to the owner. So I decided not to get it, even though I did clean it up for them myself as well. I tried to clean up as much battery acid as I could because, you know, I kind of caused them to fall out. But then again, I think they should at least check things like that to see if they still have batteries in them. But I didn't get it and uh, I went to the technology section, like I said, where there were all the phones and things, but they also had this really nice um, answering machine by Prince. And I was really thinking about getting it for this phone and I kind of think I might get it the next time I go there. It's quite nice. I actually thought it was a Pong machine at first because of the knobs on it, but obviously it wasn't. So anyways, yes, very nice telephone. Also, there's this thing here, which I'm not quite sure what that does, but you can like push it in and sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. You have to push it in quite hard. Yeah, I can't get it in now. Probably if I used two hands, I would. Um, another thing I would like to mention is that I actually got um, about uh, 15 computer software cassettes just since Friday. I got some yesterday and I got some on Friday and it was pretty lucky since, well, in all the time I've been going to second hand shops and things, I just basically found no computer software, no floppy disks, no cassettes, no anything really. Oh, I just realized you can actually see me moving my hand in the reflection of the phone there. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I found mostly Amstrad ones. I found a Commodore, uh, two Commodore 64 ones and ones at X Spectrum one. Um, I believe there were 12 Amstrad ones at Spectrum and the two Commodore ones I found in a second hand shop. And they are really, really dusty. Like the moment that you touch them with your hands, you'll get all um, round dust in your hands and it's horrible. So I definitely need to clean them. I have no, uh, I don't know much about the Amstrad CPC, which is what those games are for. So I don't know if there's any rare ones in the lot that I got. Unfortunately, the person told me that they actually decided to dump their Amstrad CPC that they had in their house, which is a shame. Because I actually went to someone's house on the exact same day because they thought they had a vintage computer. That's what I was looking for. And we were looking to buy it, but it turns out they didn't have one. They just had like some Windows XP Dell computer or something like that. It didn't look nice at all. It looked really broken and, well, boring since it's a Dell, of course. I think m most Dells since after the 90s didn't look nice. Anyways, I've just been blabbering on when this video should have been about this telephone here. I'll just move the wire up. There. Now that doesn't look nice. There we go. Much better. Alright, now, so that is it for this 1970s Northern Telecom Contempra Telephone. That's actually a rather long name. Anyways, I'm going to finish the video now.